When darkness tries to roll over my boat When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken And my fear doesn't stand a chance 
We are so glad that you joined us today. My name is Rob Kosh. I'm one of our associate pastors here at Freedom Church. And if this is your first time with us, we'd love for you to follow the link in the description box that will lead you to a connection card you can fill out. There are three ways that you can give this morning. You can either text to give, you can go online and give, or if you feel more comfortable, you can come by and drop it off or send it in the mail. We love to make declarations over our offerings, so if you would join in with me as we make this declaration this morning. We declare the heavens are open over the city of Chattanooga. We believe our officials, CEOs, and government leaders will receive peace, favor, and wisdom to serve with integrity. Prosperity in our city will thrive because of God's blessing and our obedience. Thank you, Father, for blessing Chattanooga. Hallelujah. Welcome to Freedom. I'm Trevor, and these are your weekly announcements. Today is the last day to sign up to lead a connect group. If you would like to lead a group, there will be a quick leadership training that takes place in the growth track room today, right after service. This Thursday, our fall connect group signups will begin. You can sign up by visiting our website and clicking the connect groups tab. For more information, you can also stop by our connect center or find someone wearing this lanyard. Our next H2O service will be Tuesday, September 1st at 6.30 p.m. Come out for a night of worship and ministry with our team. Child care will be available for ages 8 and under. Would you like to be closer to Jesus? If so, we have the thing for you. Every Thursday morning from 6 to 7 a.m., we have morning prayer. So come on out and join us. There's no better way to start your day. For all this information and more, connect with us on our social media platforms or visit our website at freedomchurchchattanooga.com. Good morning. How are you doing? How about that worship? Man, my goodness. It was awesome this morning. And uh, I just want to say a big thanks to our worship team and production team. Let's, can, we, can we give them a hand? And while you're at it, just go ahead and give the hand to all the Freedom Team members too uh, that make this thing work. They are amazing. We love our Freedom Team. I just want to uh, tell you a couple of things real quick before we jump into the teaching today. First off is how important connect groups are to us. Uh, this week, you're going to have the opportunity to begin to sign up for our fall semester. Um, we have purposefully this year, we've been wanting to do this for probably about a year now, but we had a meeting not too long ago. I called a bunch of people together and said, I specifically feel like you guys could offer discipleship within the groups. And so we've been having a lot of meetings on not just having fellowship and fun together, but that we're also digging into the word in some form uh, together. So there are a lot of new things for you guys to check out for the fall semester. So I would encourage you, go online, make sure you check that out. Today, as you heard, there's several people around the room. They're going to have these lanyards, okay? It just says, ask me about Connect Group. So you have any questions at all, find somebody with a lanyard or just stop by the Connect Center today as you're leaving, and then you'll be able to just uh, find somebody there as, as well with a lanyard. So super, super important because we believe that real life change happens in the context of relationships. We do. I mean, we say that, but we believe that. Unless you're in a small group, unless you're in small group discipleship and fellowship, you're just not going to grow like you need to in the Lord, okay? You get close together in a small group. You'll open up. You'll say things that you won't say right now in this room, but you will in a small environment, okay? So please, it's so, so important. We believe that connect groups are as important as what we're doing right now on Sunday morning. We, we hold it in that value, that discipleship for you guys is that important that we get you into a connect group. So please sign up for the fall semester, Okay. I want to make one more announcement before we jump into the teaching today. If, uh, if you have been with us the last couple of weeks, we've been going through our growth track again, and we're going to be doing step three today. I'm so uh, excited about this one. I love teaching step three uh, because it's all about developing your leadership and how, you know, we are all influencers and leaders. And so this can be a great teaching in just a moment. But I want to tell you something before uh, I do that. Every three years, uh, Emily and I will, uh, the board allows us to, the staff allow us to step away from ministry uh, for a month. And so we take a month long sabbatical uh, away from the church and ministry and they handle everything while we're gone. This will be our last Sunday with you guys for the next month. So we will not be back with you until Sunday, September the 20th. That is no excuse for you not to attend church. Okay. 
especially in the online world. Welcome to all of you that are watching us right now online. Uh, we wanted to hear, we wanted you guys to hear this too. And so um, just no excuse to just be at home and be like, oh, I know pastor's not there. No, I'm telling you on purpose so that we can see how faithful you are while the pastor's gone. No, I'm joking. But our team, it's, it's true though. It, it really is true. Um, but you know, our team is amazing. They're going to handle everything. You know, Pastor Rob, he's actually out uh, today, but he will be in place. And Pastor Michael and the rest of the staff, they have this thing under control. The board has it under control. And we are just so thankful that they actually offer us that opportunity to be able to step back, take a breather, get some spiritual rest, some physical rest, and come back strong uh, on Sunday, September the 20th. And so we love you guys so much. Um, we'll miss you for a month, but we're looking really forward to like getting to take a break for a month. And so we'll start, actually, I'll be in the office until this Thursday. That'll be my last day. And then I, I'm gone. So nobody call me this week trying to, to squeeze in your last like little bit. Okay. Just you're a procrastinator. You know what I mean? So you waited too long. Um, no, but you, yeah, I will be available until the end of this week. After that, I'm going off social media. I'm going off the grid completely. And I will not be available, Emily will not be available for the next month, okay? So just you know, call the church office if you have any questions. You can get, jump online, email us. The team will take care of you while we're gone, okay? We love you guys so much. All right, let me give you some instruction real quick before we jump into step three. If you're here in person in the room, uh, make sure that you do have a book with you for step three. It's available in the front lobby. We also have our ushers. If you did not grab a book when you came in, just slip up your hand, and they're going to just bring a book to you real quick. Uh, you have pens in the seat pocket in front of you, and you also have um, pens that are available through our ushers that are coming right now. If you're watching us online right now and you're actually watching this step, just hop on over to freedomchurchchattanooga.com. You can go under the connect group, I mean, not the connect group tab, sorry, under the growth track tab, you'll find uh, the manual, the step three manual that you can download and follow along with us. And so, all right, does everybody have a manual? Let's do it. Welcome to step three of the growth track. So, so far we've been through several steps of the growth track and uh, we are now at developing your leadership. And so I'm just going to teach you today about leadership. And uh, I want to read this scripture in 1 Peter 4.10. It says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. We love that. You can underline, use them well to serve one another. Leadership is influence. It's about influencing others in a worthwhile cause. It is not dependent on titles or positions. It is dependent on people discovering their gifts and passions and then using them to make a difference in the lives of others. And so we're going to talk for just a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some examples from Scripture. We're going to break down all of this material uh, pretty quickly today. But... Uh, first thing we can talk about is now that you've discovered your purpose, now that when you're moving more towards making a difference, maybe what are some things that might stand in the way? And that's the question that we're asking there. And Moses is a great example here. And I'm going to break down some scripture for you where God is talking to Moses. Of course, Moses is the one that delivered the children of Israel, brought them out of Egypt. Um, and there's a conversation that happens, and we're going to read this right now in Exodus uh, chapter 3, 11 through 12. It says, But Moses said to God, Who am I? You can underline that. Who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And God said, I will be with you. Please underline, I will be with you, because that's the whole point of being a leader. If God's with you, you can do anything. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people of, out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So we're going to break down four things here for you. Write this down. In the story of what's happening with Moses and God, there's more to just this scripture uh, surrounding this as you read in Exodus. But the first thing um, that Moses says is this. He says, who am I? Okay. And on the blank beside that, write, insecurity. A lot of times we just miss out on leadership and influences because we actually are insecure. And Moses was insecure. He says, who am I that, that I should be the one to do this job? Uh, the second thing is, what if they? 
What if they is something that he said to God? And write down fear out to the side. It's fear, and really, honestly, you can write this even more, it's fear of man is what it is. And you can say, well, you know, you know, Pastor Nathan, I don't really have a fear of man. Well, let me just put a little bit of uh, emphasis on this by when you're in a restaurant and you go to pray over your meal, what's that feeling that you feel? Just a little slight, ooh, is somebody watching? Could they hear me? What do they think? That's the fear of man. That's very slight. Some people actually are even more in depth to the fear of man and acting out because um, they have a fear of man. But so fear is a big thing that'll cause people not to lead. Uh, the third thing is this, I have never, Okay, Moses said, I have never done this. It's inadequacy is the word that I want you to write down, inadequacy. And really faith is the thing. You just have to have faith to step out. That's, that's what happens is that yes, all of us feel inadequate. I didn't start the way that I, I am right now. I mean, I'm teaching you right now, but I started out on a drum set when I was younger and then I moved into singing on a worship team a little bit out there. And then I moved into being a worship pastor for a while where I was leading people in worship and I had a keyboard in front of me. So it's a little bit of like a, a blanky kind of situation to hold on to. And now I stand out in front of you guys every Sunday uh, morning with a mic in my hand teaching with nothing in front of me, maybe a pulpit, but it's, it's just a, a process that gets you there. And you have to step out in faith so many times and that's how you become a great leader. Uh, the fourth thing is this, after all those other things, he says this, Use someone else. Like, I don't want to do it. Just you go just go find somebody else to do it. And out to the side in the blank, write reluctance. Reluctance. Um, once you know Jesus, um, then you need to make a difference for Jesus. Write that out to the side as well. Know Jesus, then make a difference for Jesus. First Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are chosen and we need to proclaim him. That's what that scripture says. I want to talk about on page 57 as you're looking at that. I just want to talk about some values of a leader. And we're going to use Daniel as we start to talk about the values of a leader it says in Daniel 6, verses 1 through 3, it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps. Now, satraps right here is basically just talking about leaders and governors is what it's saying here. So 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself, underlined distinguished himself, among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities, underline exceptional qualities. And really what that means there is excellent spirit. It's excellent spirit, exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. And really what's happening here is the king saw something in Daniel that he had developed that he was gonna be exceptional, that it was gonna distinguish him above other people. And the king said, you know what, if you're gonna do it that well, I'm just gonna put you over the whole thing. That's how well you're doing this. And we grow to that point. I wanna give you five key values that we see at Freedom that are part of our leadership. Certainly, as you join a Freedom team, you're a leader in the house, and we want you to have these values. Um, but we, we govern this way. It's actually that our values actually create our culture here at Freedom. And we want to give those to you right now. You'll see them. It's the first one is love God, love people. The second one is cultivate community. The third is choose joy. The fourth is protect unity. And the fifth is to pursue excellence. So I want to talk about a few of those right here and just break those down for you and what we mean by talking about those values and how those values play in to our leadership and being leaders and serving in the house. The first one here is we love God. Let me talk a little bit about that. It says that when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Man, underline that. They noticed, we love God, and they noticed that we're with him, that we have been with him, that there's something on our lives. So underneath this on the line, write this, develop your closeness with God. Fill that in on that blank. 
The second thing is to develop your character. And the third thing underneath that is develop your calling. You do that as you love God and you're close to Him. You develop those things in your life. Uh, the second thing here uh, that we're going to talk about is we love people. Let me talk about that for a minute. I have mentioned to you um, last week in step two that I'm more task-oriented more, more than people. Um, this is something I've actually had to work on in my ministry. Just because God gave me the gifting of being task and being detailed and seeing what needs to happen and take place and moving things a certain way does not mean that I can neglect uh, the person in the room that needs a touch. Um, I've had to work on that and develop that gifting as I have loved people. Um, I can give you a perfect example. Um, a while back, we were kind of reevaluating how we bless our guests as they come in, and you are probably one of those. You haven't been here maybe too long um, in the house as you're just now in growth track. And we were evaluating, like, what can we take away? What do we need to keep? What's important to the guests as they come in as we give them gifts and um, our touch to them and, and how many times we talk to them and what we do for them? And uh, there were a couple of things that really rose to the surface um, very quickly of just kind of polling the audience, so to speak. And uh, one of the things that really was a big deal to the guests that were coming in and people who had come and stayed at our church that we talked to was that I always write a personal thank you card, handwritten thank you card from Emily and I. We send that out to the guest and we just say, hey, thanks for coming. Sometimes it'll be a personal note. Sometimes it's just more of a general, hey, thank you for coming and being a guest and giving us your time. And I was shocked to find out that there were people who had kept that thank you card for years. Like they still have the thank you card from when they came and I wrote them personally in a thank you note. And so that's just a touch. That's just one touch that talks about being oriented to people and blessing people and thinking about people. And so we love people well. And I want you to write this down underneath um, this, this topic of we love people. You need to be a servant. Write that in the line. The next thing is this, is that you need to be a team player, a team player. Out to the side, I want you to write this, we over me. I can't stress this enough. It's always we over me with us. And we talked about how we protect unity. We build unity in that. We, we love people and we're going to get together and we're going to be team players and we're going to be we over me every single time and we're going to protect that unity. Um, the third thing there underneath that is to be real. Just be yourself. That's what we want you to do. Is we want you to be yourself. Go ahead and turn on over uh, to the next one. And the third thing I want to talk to you about is that we pursue excellence. This says this about Jesus. People were overwhelmed with amazement he has done everything well, they said. That's in Mark 7, 37. I want you to write this down underneath that. It says, do things well. Write that down. Do things well. In fact, write this out to the side in parentheses. Do fewer things very well. Just do several small things very well, and you'll do things well every single time. Here's another one under there. Do them before you're asked. But do them before you're asked. And it's initiative. That's what that is. Uh, I want to tell you a personal story just real quick. Um, I had a moment in time in my life where I felt like I took some initiative based on what God was telling me to do. I didn't really understand it at the time, but I just took the steps. And it was when uh, I was in high school, um, I played football in our hometown and uh, it wasn't very big. So, you know, Friday night lights and that whole thing that is so true. Uh, for the town that I grew up in, and Friday night is a big deal, and football is a big deal. And so I played football, and I got to my junior year, and I was first string. We we're going into spring practice, and one week into the two week spring practice, I really felt like the Lord was asking me to step back from football and um, not play that next year, my senior year. Uh, and I was first string, it was a very hard decision to make. Um, and at the time I was 17, I, I wasn't even really sure I was hearing God's voice. I just knew it was on my heart and I could not uh, stop what I was feeling. And uh, so uh, eventually I did. I, I stepped back from football and felt like, hey, I got I to gotta step back and, and quit and see what God's saying. Uh, and then uh, our church 
pretty much right after that broke out into a, a revival and a move of God. We started having Friday night revival services, which of course, if, like I just said, it's Friday night, so it's always a big night. So my senior year and a lot of my time was spent actually singing on the worship team every single Friday night, rather than being at the football game, I was on stage singing uh, on the worship team. Well, um, I graduated from high school and decided to go to Brownsville Revival School of Ministry in Pensacola uh, at BRSM. And when I got there, um, I really felt, I got there a month early, I really felt like the Lord was saying to give a letter to the worship pastor. Now this is a congregation the, the room would hold about 3,000 people. So this is a pretty good sized church. I didn't even know the worship pastor, didn't even know how I would get to him. And I really felt like this is crazy. Like I, I can't write a letter and give it to uh, Lindell, that was his name. And um, so, but it was on me. And so I went home, I wrote a letter. I was in the service when it happened. I went home and wrote a letter out, basically saying, hey, if you ever need uh, a tenor singer, a person, to sing this part, um, you know, I could do that, and this is some experience. Uh, I felt like this is crazy. So after the service that night, I actually called his name out, stopped him, went and um, and gave him the letter. I thought, Whoo, okay, this was just a test from the Lord, and uh, that's over. Well, the next day, his assistant Brenda called the house and uh, asked me. She said, "I, you know, Linda wants you to." sing at the end of the service tonight, so be ready at the end at the altar time. I want you to come up and uh, sing with the team. And uh, we sang a couple of songs. He brought me back to his office. We talked for a minute. And then he began to tell me that he said, you know, I, I did not know what I was going to do because I had uh, one singer, I had two singers in this part uh, that was singing for us. One has spent so much time away from her, her family that she needed to have some a little bit of a break and spend some time with her family. And the other uh, guy that was singing that part was a nurse. He was an RN, and so he could only be there every other night. And this was every night of the week that we were there, pretty much. And so he said, um, I'm going to ask if you can fill in for a little while for me uh, because I didn't have anybody. And uh, it really shocked me that really, honestly, that didn't start in that moment. What it happened is it goes all the way back to my junior year of high school where I took an initiative and I kept taking those initiatives until God opened the door for what he had for me and, and what happened. And that, it was a big deal because you were not able to serve um, in the church as a first year student. And so Lindell actually got up in, in front of about seven or 800 people and said, I need Nathan in this position. And so he's going to be the only one um, that we're going to allow to sing at the church because I need him. Uh, so it was just an initiative that I took. I didn't really know what I was doing or what it would impact or mean, but down the road it, it meant everything, you know, for an experience that I had. So you do them before you're asked. You take initiative. You go for it. Here's the third thing. Do more than is expected. Just go the extra mile. Um, that's actually found. When you say go the extra mile, you're talking about something that Jesus says. That he says if you are asked to carry your pack for a mile, go ahead and do it two miles. It's because that was a law in the Jewish culture that it was a law that if a Roman soldier said, hey, carry my pack uh, one mile, that was the law. So at, at the end of one mile, you could drop the pack. But Jesus said, nah, -uh. you, you serve people well. You go even more. You be more excellent and go an extra mile. So uh, one more thing I want to talk to you about is this, is that we choose joy. It's a choice that you choose joy. It's actually the attitude it's really the X factor. It actually multiplies. When you choose joy, other people around you are going to be joyful because you have chosen a certain attitude. Attitude matters the most when you don't feel like it. Attitude matters the most when you don't feel like it. I love what Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 6.10. He says, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Look at the difference. Sor I'm, I'm, I'm like down and out, but I choose to rejoice. Um, I, you know, I'm poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. You see the attitude of Paul's heart. It's like, it doesn't matter what I'm experiencing, I choose this. I'm going this direction. Um, we had a nursery when Elijah was a small child. Emily did an uh, amazing job on this. It was like a vintage kind of nursery. We had like rocking horses and teddy bears, and it was just this really peaceful environment. 
a beautiful nursery that Emily created. And I remember in that nursery, we had a book, uh, a vintage book of Winnie the Pooh. And I don't know if you remember Winnie the Pooh, you've seen, you know, a lot of movies have come out recently um, based on these stories of Winnie the Pooh and the writer. Um, you also have all these cartoons and things that have happened. And I tell you, when you're talking about dealing with people and serving, um, that's probably one of the best things to look at when you're talking about personalities because there's so many different personalities that are happening within the context of that story. And uh, I really want to point out this when I'm talking about choosing joy. I want to talk about Tigger for a minute. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've read Winnie the Pooh or you know anything about it, uh, man, Tigger, when he comes in the room, it's like, it's joyful. It's a celebration. This guy is going crazy. And it doesn't matter what mood Eeyore's in, you know, like, oh, I'm just down in the dumps. And Tigger comes in and he's bouncing off of his tail and everything's happening. And one of the things I love about Tigger is that every time they say, you know, do you want to do this, Tigger? And he's like, that's what Tiggers do best. Um, it's just the attitude of, yeah, it doesn't matter what it is, I'll do it. If it's uh, the parking lot, let's just use it for this, for serving in the house. The parking lot, the nursery, the whatever it is, it's like, yeah, that's what I do best. It's my attitude. It's we choose joy in every single situation when we're serving others. So I want to uh, write this down. Underneath, we choose joy. Be enjoyable. Be enjoyable. Take responsibility for the atmosphere in the room. I take responsibility for the atmosphere in the room every Sunday. You take responsibility as you're serving other people for the responsibility of the attitude of the room. Uh, the next one is be positive. The answer is always yes. Be problem solvers. The third thing is to be loyal. Be loyal. I want to give you some next steps uh, as we're kind of closing this out on step three. Uh, so here they are found on page 60. It's uh, number one is just attend step four of the growth track. So you got one more step to go, uh, hopefully, and uh, you're going to go attend step four of the growth track. And the second thing uh, that we want you to do there in your next steps is to complete a freedom team application. And I want to talk to you for a minute about the leadership honor code that you'll see here uh, on pages 60 and 61. It says um, several things here on 61, and I want to lead you through those, that as we are honoring God and we're honoring God through our leadership, uh, that it's important that you actually live by a certain standard. And so we want to cover those, and I just want to cover those as, as a pastor. Um, one says sexual Immorality, that's sexual activity outside of marriage. Uh, indulging in much wine or other alcoholic beverages. Dishonest gain, illicit drugs, pornography. Now I want you to put an asterisk next to this paragraph at the bottom. It's all behaviors or habits which might, which might cause Christ to grieve and others to stumble. You can underline that, Christ to grieve and others to stumble. Exam examples include profanity, use of tobacco products, gambling, etc. Our desire is for you to walk in freedom and be an example of his freedom to those around you. Um, I just tell you, listen, if you are, you know, we're not being religious about this, what we're saying to you is this. If you have certain things that are happening in your life, it's really simple. It's just repent, you ask forgiveness, and you actually just move on. And there may be some things that you're confronted with after you've been through all these steps and you're learning more about yourself and being a leader and being an influencer and being someone that's actually serving others well, that these things can come into play. And I love the way that we say it. It's that if you're causing Christ to grieve or maybe others to stumble, maybe you need to take a step back and look at what you're doing with your life and, you, and really use this honor code, this leadership honor code, to govern what you feel like God is doing in your life. And really, it's about a relationship with the Lord. It's not about legalistic lines of you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. No, you should feel like you don't want to do this because you're grieving the Holy Spirit in your life. And so we want you to be free and we want you to walk in freedom. And so we address these. And so it's it's really important to us. We want a signature here that says, if you're going to be a part of this freedom team, if you're going to join up and you're going to serve, 
that you are being governed by the Holy Spirit and that you are an example to others. And so that's what that leadership honor code is all about. The third thing that I want to talk to you about is that you're going to connect with a freedom team leader. Uh, if you go through step four, once you do that and complete it, you're actually going to connect with one of our leaders uh, over our teams here on the freedom teams, and they're going to connect with you and talk to you and have a conversation. And hey, listen, if you don't want to sign the leadership honor code until next week when you complete it, go ahead. Take some time to think about that and sign that. Um, and you'll have a conversation with that freedom team leader um, as you do that. And the fourth thing that we want you to do is when we need to serve others. I want to do one more thing as we're closing this out today. I want to read the leader declaration that you find on page 62 out loud. So let's read it together. Because God has called me to serve my generation, I will value worship over wealth, we over me, character over comfort, service over status, and God's purposes over possessions, positions, popularity, and pleasure. To my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I say, however, whenever, wherever, and whatever you ask me to do, my answer in advance is yes. Wherever you lead and whatever the cost, I'm ready anytime, anywhere. I want to be used by you in such a way that on that final day, I'll hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in and let the eternal party begin. Man, I don't know. I'm, I'm almost in tears right now. I'm preaching to myself today. I don't know. It's just, there's something about this step three that just kind of seals the deal almost in the way of what we want you to do in Growth Track and just lets you really know everything that we've been getting you to, to this purpose. And so, and I hope you really enjoyed it. I did, like I said, um, just listening to the teaching once again. And uh, we want to do something before we close this out. We have a couple of things that we want to do, but I'm going to ask you right now if you'll bow your heads and close your eyes. You may be in this room today and uh, you, you've never had a relationship. As I was talking about earlier, that relationship is the most important thing, that one-on-one -on -one with God. And uh, right now in this moment, we would just want to pause and take a moment to offer you the opportunity to meet Jesus. Maybe for the first time, maybe uh, you're in this room and it's been a long time since you felt the kiss of heaven in a relationship with Jesus and you've pulled so far away and you've run so hard in the other direction that you're like the prodigal in Luke 15 and you've actually pulled away from that relationship with the Lord and I can feel the Holy Spirit right now in the room just drawing people back, their hearts back. Maybe online you're watching us and you're feeling the same way. You're like, man, I, I gotta get back into a relationship with Jesus. So if you're in this room right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed and you say, I need to make that decision. Can you just slip your hand up? Just let me know who I'm talking to just real quick in the room. And if you're watching us right now online, you're also gonna have that opportunity to pray with us in just a moment as we pray this prayer. You know, the Bible tells us that we have to make a declaration of our faith, that Paul tells us this in Romans 9. He says that we have to believe in our heart that Jesus is the Son of God, but we also have to proclaim that and make a declaration with our mouth. We confess it with our mouth, and that's the way that we're saved. And so right now I'm going to lead you in a prayer and pray this out loud. If you raise your hand, if you're watching us right now online, it's a declaration of your faith. So pray this out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you for saving me, for taking my sins to the cross. I repent today. Wash me clean. Give me your power to walk in freedom. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate with those that prayed that prayer? Come on, why don't you stand up with me this morning? If you did pray that prayer, if you're watching us online, we need to connect with you so that we can give you some next steps. And so we wanted you to text Jesus FCC to 94090. Um, just text that and we'll connect with you and give you some next steps on what you need to do. Um, we're going to close this out a little bit different. And I forgot to tell you about step three connection. If you have not filled out a step three card, there's two ways that you could do that really quick. You can jump on your phones right now and do this. Just text FC.
Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you enjoyed the message, you can certainly help us reach others by giving at freedomchurchchattanooga.com.